Back here in Montreal where we're getting ready to fire the engines as we get ready for this uh, one and only race outside the U.S. for the NASCAR Nationwide Series and NASCAR Traveling Series at all, we should say. And as we come topside one more time, let's talk a little bit about uh, it, the atmosphere. I mean, there are reports, I'm sure probably if you follow the series, that this might be the last race. I hope that it doesn't happen. I think. Look at this. I mean, the energy is just amazing. I hope they're coming back. I really do, Marty, because just like you said, it's it's energetic out here. These people are really pumped up. The place is beautiful. And look, we've had some bad luck here with rain and things like that, but not today. Today it's beautiful. This crowd is amazing. The track is going to be great. It's going to be fast. There will be wrecks, but it's going to be exciting. I hope we stay here. Let's flash back a couple of road course races ago at Road America. We learned some very difficult lessons, especially guys like Justin Allgaier. Oh, big time lessons. I mean, these guys, and I think what they've Learned. They can't gamble on fuel. Be ready for about three green-white checkers, the max allowed. I mean, look at Justin Algar. I think he's got this thing won at Road America. Runs out of fuel late in the race. They cannot gamble on fuel, Ricky. You're right, Rusty. One of the ways that you save fuel is under caution. You can push the clutch in and coast downhill or even shut the engine off. You can save a considerable amount of fuel. Problem is, there's no downhill here on this track. It's completely flat. I don't know how they're going to save fuel today, Rusty. Well, in the other key area, it starts and restarts. Yeah, restarts are a compromise. The drivers have to be very careful, very delicate. And if they aren't careful and delicate, they could suffer a self-inflicted wound. You watch these turn one, turn two entries. Very, very difficult to get through there by yourself. Try too wide. And they sail them in there, Ricky, and they get hot in the corner, run off course, get through the grass, and get all over the place right here. And we're going to see this restart after restart. I haven't seen very many clean restarts at this track. These guys are aggressive. The track is narrow. And because of that, they get really, really uptight, get on the brakes hard, come through the gear shifter. This is one of the most aggressive racetrack, crashing-prone places <laughs> I've ever seen. But it's exciting to watch. All right. Uh, let's take a look now at our onboard cameras as we've got the total of eight of them. And you can see that there's Elliot Sadler in the one main financial Chevrolet. Danica Patrick, of course, across the top. Justin Allgaier in the 31. We'll be talking a little bit more about Justin in a matter of moments. Reed Sorensen, of course, in that points championship battle along with Sadler. And, of course, our points leader, Ricky Stenhouse Jr. And then Scott Speed in the number 33 and a specialty camera on him as he's got a foot camera as also Carl Edwards, Stephen Wallace, and Patrick Carpentier in his final race. He, too, has a foot camera as well. So we'll be able to watch that heel-toe action. Let's go trackside and fire him up. Et maintenant, pour prononcer les paroles que tous les amateurs de course attendent impatiemment. And now, to say these words you've all been waiting for. À nouveau accueillant le président, chef des opérations de l'UAP, Let's welcome once again the President and CEO of UAP, Monsieur Robert Atem. Il vous écoute, Monsieur. Conducteur, démêlé, promoteur, drivers, start your engines! Well, I can tell you, the engines were the only thing we had to fire up because the fans have been fired up, we're fired up, and we hope you are as well. Our in-race reporter is going to be Justin Allgaier, the man who had all the misfortune of running out of fuel back at Road America. We'll talk to him when we come back here to Circuit Gilles Villeneuve in Montreal, Quebec. Here in Montreal, the crowd erupts into the roar as the cars pull out onto the racetrack, and it is just so electric here. It is, hopefully, you're feeling it back home, like we said, because it has just been amazing. Across the top of your screen, here is the starting lineup. Now, several DNQs, Jean-Francois Dumoulin, Tim George, Brett Rowe, Chase Miller, Tommy Dreesey, they all were not able to qualify. Now, Dreesey has jumped into the 75, so he'll start in the rear, as will Carl Edwards, Marcus Ambrose, Trevor Bain, because of the driver change. So it should be fun watching those guys trying to come from the back. Let's go to our in-race reporter, Justin Allgaier. Let's talk to him, Rusty. 
Hey, Justin Allgaier, Rusty Wallace up here at ESPN. You got us? Yeah, Rusty Loud and Clear. Go ahead, bud. Hey, we've got an ESPN mailbag question that comes from David in Springfield, Massachusetts. His question is, how does this track differ from the other two road courses you've run this season? Well, that's a great question. Uh, the biggest answer that I can give you is this track is, is really suited to, uh, to Road America, the elevation changes. Uh, but it's a really technical course, uh, lots of really tight corners, especially left and right. And uh, hard on brakes, that's the biggest thing I can preach is uh, and today it's going to be all about tire conservation, or uh, brake conservation, and hopefully uh, we can get this go to go to the front. Okay, thanks a lot for talking to us, Justin. We're going to go to talk to your crew chief, uh, Jimmy Ellich. Jimmy Ellich, Ricky Craven in the ESPN booth. You got me? Yes, sir. Loud and clear. Hey, Jimmy, there's a lot to think about on this road course, but nothing more important than preserving the brakes. Now, will you have to coach your driver today to save those brakes? Yeah, absolutely. I think, you know, it's easy, as you well know, you know, to get caught up in, in racing hard, you know, and, and that's what uh, Justin's going to do and want to do all day long. But uh, the name of the game here is going to be conserve brakes and, you know, get your fuel mileage numbers and readings early on in the race and figure out when you can get to that get home lap and make sure you got brakes for once you get to that point so you can race really hard at the end. Yeah, sounds great, Jimmy. Thanks a lot for your time. Have a great race. Yes, sir. Thank you. And we still have just enough time to be able to get one last check down on pit road. Let's first lead down to Rick DeBrew. Well, Marty, Elliot Sadler may be impressed with the star-studded entry list this weekend, but he knows his job here is this simple this weekend. Not to race the stars, to come away with as many points as possible. He can't fix the mistakes or the misfortunes of the last few weekends. He knows he has to go for points. And it's especially important, he says, to know who you're racing on the track. If it's somebody you're duking out for the championship, we'll definitely go for it. But if it's a one-off guy, well, you don't want to go and do something that end up taking both of you out, especially with a guy who isn't concerned about the championship. Jim Noble? Well, Rick, today is the final act in the 27-year career of Patrick Carpentier. He plans to retire after this race, and what a career it's been. Five cart wins, even won a Sprint Cup pole a couple of years ago in New Hampshire. Patrick has a 10-year-old daughter, a 5-year-old son, simply wants to spend more time with them. But what a way it would be to go out with a great performance here in his home province of Quebec. Over to Shannon Spake. Well, it's the first time in Nationwide Series history two Canadians are starting on the first row. And while Jacques Villeneuve is looking to win a race here at the track named after his father, it's actually Alex Tagliani who's driving the number 12 car. That is the same number car that Gilles Villeneuve drove to Victory Lane here at Montreal in the very first race held back in 1978. Now, Gilles Villeneuve was a huge uh, childhood hero of Alex Tagliani. In fact, when Tagliani was nine years old, he wore a shirt of Jill Villeneuve. What it wore it every single day, he told me. He made his mom wash it every night. In fact, it faded by the end of the season. Now, the crew guys on this team, they've taken that picture and they have taped it to the inside of Tagliani's car so that he can look at it during this race and know exactly what is on the line here. Marty? Inspiration, to say the least. Thank you, Shannon. Let's uh, also flash back to last week, because if you remember the nationwide race, several teams had trouble in pit road. How about Jimmy Johnson? Fuel can goes for a ride. Didn't happen just to him. It was also several other cars, including Jason Leffler in the 38. And hold on. No, couldn't quite get it. And in the 01 of Mike Wallace, not only did Can go outside the box, so did the fueler. Well, that brings us to Sean Pete. He's going to be our over-the-wall reporter. Sean, the jack man on the number 32 of Reed Sorensen. Sean, uh, any chance we're going to see that same kind of problem this week? No, I don't think so, guys. I think the angle's a lot better on the car. This is just like riding a bike for these guys. So, uh, um, I mean, they make that job out to be harder than it is anyways. It's, uh, I mean, they got to stick the can in the car, and that's, uh, that's about it. So, uh, so they, they do a great job. Uh, it should be easier for them. Uh, um, like I said, all they're doing is it's north of the border, so they should be fine. All right, thank you very much. As, uh, you guys be safe down there today. Of course, we should point out Sean is from Vancouver, British Columbia. All right, uh, word on the 16 uh, down on pit road. Shannon, what's going on? Radio problems already, uh, Marty. We told you, uh, we obviously documented Trevor Bain making it to the track from Michigan. He went out onto the track for the uh, for the laps, the first couple laps, and he could not hear the crew, so they brought him down pit road. They told him to stay here until they get the radio fixed, because obviously communication, extremely important, especially here in Montreal, and he is now down and away, guys, so it looks like they may have gotten that.
fixed. We'll definitely keep you updated if anything should happen. And as we pointed out, he will be starting in the back of the field anyway, so uh, no harm, no foul there. And how about Carl trying to get some adjustments today? Now, Billy Johnson qualified this car. Yeah, Billy did a good job qualifying it, but Carl, we've seen him win in this car here before. He's making some final adjustments. He's in the car now. He's belted in safely. He feels comfortable. Just some last-minute changes. He's going to have to start tailback no matter what. So this is no harm, no foul. They can take his time and be careful about everything he's doing. Right now. Yeah, they want to get it right because it's the only opportunity they have, Rusty. He's rolling off pit road now. And let's talk a lot about our Goodyear track facts as we get ready to go green here at the 2.7-mile layout of Circuit Gilles Villeneuve. All right, we're going to go 74 laps, but that all-important pit window. Yeah, they, they got to be very mindful of this pit window. I mean, these guys could run out of fuel right here. I mean, you got to remember what happened at Road America. They tried to run too long. Too many green-white checkers run themselves out of fuel. These cars can run about max 27, 28 laps. This is the window we pick, Ricky. 25 to 27 laps for our fans. Yeah, they're going to be safe. Now, keep in mind, they qualified three laps, four if you count the cool-down lap, and then they have these two warm-up laps. So their pit window on that first stop will be inside 19 to 20 laps instead of the 25 to 27. A lot of calculating here on this 2.71 mile track. Well, you want to talk about calculating? Let's talk a little pit strategy. Stephen Wallace in the 66. Jim Noble, what are you hearing? That's right, Marty. Just checked in with Doug Randolph, the crew chief on the 66. He is going to bring Steve Wallace down pit road on lap four. They're going to take left side tires. Might take four, but probably only two. They are planning to get some extra fuel in that car. Doug Randolph has told Steve Wallace, I need to plan for more than one green-white checkered at the end of this thing. We need to get ourselves in position position to do that so they will pit on lap four and this is a good point because three of our four races have gone green white checker here yeah and the whole point is what i just mentioned about the 19 to 20 by pitting early on lap four now that puts them inside their fuel window a full tank of fuel and then they can do it in two stops well i think and they don't think they can get as good a fuel mileage as i think they can get i think they could have you know stopped this thing probably around lap 20 or something been fine but they're concerned about what happened in road america uh, and running out of fuel late in this race with the, the pit window being the way it is so it's going to be interesting to see what happens. There's a lot of different strategies out here, and I just can't wait to see who's going to bike first and hit pit road. Lap four, that's all for early. Well, and we'll see if it works, because remember, the one thing about road course racing, you do not want to pit under a caution. You do not want to pit under caution. The other thing we got to keep in mind is that this tire is the tire that was run at Infineon. Boris said, a road course expert, told me, I just don't like this tire. We've heard that. Marty Rusty, all weekend long, that's echoed through the garage here, not really comfortable on this tire. There you see from high above. Now to the right there, that is the rowing course that was used back in the 1976 Olympics. It is still in use today, and uh, it's a perfect rectangle as we pull back. And they're getting ready to come through the last couple of corners. This is that one trouble area that Rusty was pointing out. Turns 13 and 14. Marcus Ambrose remembers that corner all too well. It cost him a race win against Carl Edwards. Here we come down towards the starting line. And the crowd is on their feet. And the Napa 200 from Circuit Gilles Villeneuve in Montreal. See exactly why Bill Villeneuve took the inside, that right side. He chose driver right for the start of the race. That was not the perfect line for turn one, but it set him up great for turn two, which is the high-speed exit. Yeah, that was really good turn two exit, but I will tell you, when the restarts start happening, guys, that's going to be different. These guys are going to bob down to that corner. They're going to get real aggressive. They're going to be being very, very kind to each other on that first corner, I can promise you. So far, everybody taking good care of each other. No contact. On to turn six complex. Yeah, Marty, this is a really clean start. And at this point, it's all about establishing a rhythm. You really don't want to race one another. You want to race the track. You want to reestablish those braking points, those turn-in points, those accelerating points. And then three or four laps into it, you can start to get aggressive. Yeah, guys, right now they're just kind of being cool out there because they've got to. They want to get to that first pit window, that first pit stop. You know, get in there clean. Don't wear the brakes out. Take care of their equipment right now. Listen to the fans because Jacques is in the lead. The French-Canadian crowd, they'll be cheering every time. 
He's in the lead, but Jason Leffler's giving him a run for his money to lead this first lap. It's going to be interesting as they all cycle through this hairpin turn. Really come, it's going to be interesting coming into the final two turns. Yeah, they get flat sailing down this straight wide right here, guys. About 170 miles an hour. Down here hard on the brake, down to second gear. And this leads into turn th 13. Look how big those strips are on the inside there, Ricky. It throws the car crazy through there. It is crazy. To put it in perspective, they go from 35 miles an hour to